Hello everyone, welcome back to another Chess Endgames video. Now I know it's been a while since I've done a Chess Endgames video, but here it is. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some common Rook and Pawn Endgames. Before we get further on into the video, please smash the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. So, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So the first position, which I'm going to be t showing you guys on how to play, is the most common. It's when one side has a rook and a king, while the other side has a pawn and a king. So it's literally a rook versus pawn endgame. In this position, let's say you're playing black. It's black to move and win. Can you please pause the video and try to find the correct move? That's right, it's rook to e7. After the move rook to e7, black has an option of playing pawn to e5 as sorry white has an option of playing pawn to e5 as white is trying to reach the e8 square with this pawn so that he can promote it to a queen after this after let's say pawn to e5 the goal is to get your king to the opposite side of the pawn but first to do that we need a waiting move as you don't want to go to e2 right away the point being that you want his king to move first so that you can you don't have to waste the move with king to e2 but rather can go king to e3 right away so you play a waiting move with the rook with rook to e8 that's the reason why you play to e7 first and not directly to e8 after the move king to d5 you follow through with the plan with king to e3 king to d6 as White is desperately trying to push his pawn to the a8, e8 square. King to f4, continuing on with the plan of maneuvering the king around the pawn to the other side of the white king. Pawn to e6, pushing the pawn, and king to f5. As you can see in this position, the only move for white is to play pawn to e7. Any other move would result in rook captures on e6, and that would be a completely winning rook and rook versus king end game for white you play pawn to e they have to play pawn to e7 and after which king to f6 is a completely winning end game because no matter what white does let's say king to d7 you just take the pawn and after a move such as king to d6 this is a completely winning end game because it's a king versus rook end game now now let's see after this well, what if they don't play king to d5? What if they play king to e4 to try to block your king from going to the other side of the pawn? Well, in this position, you have to try to get opposition to the white king with king to e2. Now, wherever the white king goes, no matter where he goes, you go to the opposite direction. For example, if the, if the white king goes to either d4 or d5, you play king to f3. If he plays king to f4 or king to f5 you play king to d3 moving your king in the opposite direction the entire goal is to try to get your king to the opposite side of the pawn as the other king after the move e6 king to d4 king to f6 and king to d5 it's the same position as before except with the kings having switched place White again is forced to play e7, and after king to d6, just like before, this is a completely winning endgame. After king to f7, rook captures e7, and king to f6. You should be easily able to checkmate the white king in this position. If you don't already know how to do this, check out one of my previous videos, which I'll link down in the description, which will help you learn how to checkmate with the rook and a king versus a king. Let's move on to our next rook and pawn position. The next position is this position, and right now you're playing as white. Now this is an extremely common position, believe it or not, and I've had to play this multiple times in my game. Now as you can see, your opponent is up a pawn and he's about to promote with a1. However, your rook is stopping that, because, and so is his rook, because to promote the pawn, first he needs to move the rook. However, if he moves the rook anywhere, then you just nab his pawn in a completely draw and end game. You're trying to draw in this position. So, the first thing I want to talk about is any common mistakes in this position. 
it's it's not okay to move your king towards the rook and try to get the pawn this way. This is because if you try to play a move like king to f2, there's a very common trick here, and that's rook to h1. Point being that if rook captures a2, then black has rook to h2, and after the king moves, let's say to e3, then black just gets your rook. This type of tactic is called a skewer, when there's a more important piece behind a less important piece, or the king behind in front of the rook. Okay, so obviously king to f2 is a bad move, and this is why you need to keep your king either on h2 or on g2 at all times. The way to draw this endgame is by pretty much spam checking the black king, as the black king is going to try to march his king to b2, move the rook, and then promote to a queen. So let's see how to do this. You just, you can't play king to f2, so essentially all you have to do is just keep on checking the black king. If he gets too close to the rook, or if you don't have any more checks, you have to go back to the a file. As if you go to any other file, then black just moves his rook and promotes to a queen. You need to constantly keep the pressure on the a2 pawn so that black can't move his rook. If they play king to b7, you simply play rook to a3, again keeping the pressure on the a2 pawn. If they try to catch your rook with king to b6, with the plan of getting their king to b4, you still continue on checking the black king, and after they get too close, you simply move back to a8. This And if they try to like go to b2, move their rook, and promote to a queen, you just continuously check them, no matter what. This position is a draw because after 50 moves of just spam checking the black king or if three positions are repeated, then what happens is then it's a draw by 50, uh, 50 move rule. The 50 move rule is basically a rule that states that if there's 50 moves which in which no progress is made, then it's a draw or if it's a threefold repetition. For example, if black keeps going back and forth and you just continuously check him, it's a threefold repetition, and in this position, it's a draw. So now, now that you know how to hold this position with the, when, when black is up upon, the the main idea is to keep your rook on the a file, or just continuously check the black king. Now let's move on to the next position. This is the next position. Now I'm going to be going over all three case scenarios where in the end game when white has two pawns and black has the rook so it's a two pawn versus rook end game i'm going to be going over the scenarios in which white is winning in which it's a draw and in which black is winning so let's say you're playing white in this position as you can see the black killing the black king is completely out of play so in this position it's a win for white after the move b6 Let's say they try to bring their king into the game. King to b5. Rook to b8, let's say. Pawn to c6. King to f3. Um, pawn to c7. Rook to c8, stopping the pawn. And then finally, pawn to b7. Or you don't actually have to play pawn to b7, you could instead play king to c6. After the move, king to e4, you play pawn to b7, and as you can see, the rook is under attack. No matter where the rook moves, you promote to a queen, and after they capture, you promote to another queen. And in this position, it's a completely winning endgame, with the king and a queen versus a king. Now, if you don't know how to checkmate like this, if you're white, Please check out one of my previous videos, which I will also link in the description, which teaches you in depth how to checkmate with the queen and the king versus the king. Now let's go to a position with the two pawns versus the rook in which black is actually winning. The, right now it's white to move, so let's say white plays pawn to c6 check. As you can see in this position, instead of the king being on h1, the king is on d7, so it's a more active king. When the black king is extremely active, they can win the game. After after the moves, king to c7 and king to c5. Black has the simple plan of playing rook to b8, stopping this pawn from ever moving, king to b6, rook to a8, 
and rook to a5 to grab the pawn. So let's see how black does this. Rook to b8, king to c4, protecting the b5 pawn, king to b4, b6, king to b4, rook to a8, king to c4, and king to a5. Now, no matter what white does, black will get the b5 pawn. Even if white tries to push a c7 pawn, simply king takes c7, and then after the king comes back, white, black will regain his pawn. King to b4, b4, rook takes b5 with check, king to c4, and king takes c6. In this position, black is completely winning. So now let's see a position in which, in which the two pawns versus the rook is actually a draw. And this is when the black king isn't too close to the pawns or too far away. After the move, pawn to b6, king to e6, king to b5, trying to push his pawns with the help of the king, king to d7, pawn to b7 with the tempo on the rook and threatening to promote. In this position, black has two options. Either he could play to any any square that's on the 8th rank, or he could play pawn to b8. If, for some reason, black plays pawn to b8, you should remember this position, as in this position, white is completely move winning after the move king to b6. This is because, as you can see, the pawn, oops, sorry, that's not a pawn move, the pawn and the king completely stop and block out the black king from the game, and the rook is stuck on b8. After the following moves, as you can see, it's just like before, when white has his two pawns on the 7th rank and the rook is forced to move, after which white will be completely winning in a queen versus king endgame. So black, after this move, black has to move his rook away, let's say to f8, after which white plays king to b6 and black plays king to f6. After the move, pawn to c6. Black can simply sacrifice, or not even sacrifice, but black can simply take the pawn. And after king to, and after king to a7, black has the move rook to c4. With the point being that after the move b8 queen, you can check the black king on the on the side of the board, forcing the black king sorry forcing the white king to move. And after rook to b4, is the same tactic as before with the skewer. After the king moves. It's a simple exchange, and this is a draw because a king cannot checkmate another king. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about rook and pawn endgames. Please check out some of my previous videos which will pop up in some time, and smash that like button and hit the subscribe button if you don't mind. Other than that, leave any suggestions or questions that you have in the comment section below. And, thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.